Right. Go, and I'll go back and maybe we'll go to this cocktail. Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to keep you that long. I hope not. This is your last time, too. That's right. If you don't have long, put up with me, Paul. How you doing? Call the meeting to order. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the city in which we live. Guide us this evening as we make our decisions for Christ. Amen. Amen. This is a special call meeting of the Newton City Council, December the 12th, 2023, for the purpose of a public hearing on the FY 2024 budget. I'm going to open that public hearing at this time and ask Mr. Craver if he has a presentation. Yeah. Yes, Mayor Brady, members of council, um, we're here yet again. Um, it's that time of year where we host our, you know, uh, public hearing um, to consider the annual budget for our next fiscal year, which will begin after your January meeting if adopted. Um, I have a few slides here we're going to go through, um, typically in summary type, um, to talk about the proposed budget. We'll talk about some trends. We'll talk about some of the items I think are of particular interest to you as elected officials and members of our community. Um, at any time in which you may have a question, please feel free to stop me. Um, we can talk. Um, about as much or as little as you'd like. Um, so without any further ado, I'm gonna proceed through the presentation. Um, on behalf of the staff, um, I'd like to you know, declare that yet again, the city of Newton has received this distinguished budget presentation award. Um, that's not an easy task. Um, each of you know, um, because each of you has seen a copy of the budget for all the years that you have served in your position, the amount of time and effort that goes into that. In particular, I want to thank, of course, our city manager, Mr. Cletus Phillips, um, and Rhonda Helton, our program manager, as well as the department directors. There's a lot of time and effort that go into putting this document together and being recognized by our peers um, through GFOA is quite an accomplishment. So, um, as we get into the 2024 budget, there are certain particular challenges. None of these, I think, should stand out to any of you because we've talked about them during retreats and other times in which we gather um, to do the business of the city. Um, of course, you know, the, the first one is, uh, you know, balancing the expected levels of service with the cost of providing such services. We are well known in this region for providing excellent services to the citizens and visitors alike, and the cost of providing those services is a challenge at times. Um, incorporating salary increases into the budget. You know, we are very much uh, in a competitive marketplace um, where we need to pay members of our staff what they deserve for the services they provide. Um, and, you know, as you have learned over the years, you know, the cost of providing those services can um, take up a lion's share of our budget. 51% of this proposed budget uh, is due to wages, and an additional 26% is the benefits assigned to those individuals. Here at the City of Noonan, we don't make widgets. Um, we are service-oriented. We are a people-first organization. We provide service through the people we have. And so a lion's share, again, of our budget is going to be included in the wages and benefits provided to those individuals. The fourth uh, number down there, the first, fourth budget, is the estimating a millage rate based on a tax digest that has been growing primarily on reassessments. I want to make sure we notice that, um, that while uh, the digest has grown, it has been mainly around reassessments, not necessarily new growth. We've had new growth, but the, again, a large share of that has been on reassessments. And then the impact um, of continuing costs and increase of goods and services, and we can get into that here in the following slides. So the general fund, as required by law, um, is balanced in the proposed budget you have in front of you. Um, we have other funds, special revenue funds and others, um, enterprise funds, but the general fund, as required by law, is balanced here. You can see the number. It's hard to see, maybe from far away, but <laughs> there's a $3.6 million increase from 2023, which amounts to an 11% increase. But what you have in front of you is a balanced budget that uses no reserves to balance the budget. Percentage change over time, beginning in 2020, moving to 2024, you've seen years where we've had small increases, um, the year right out of the pandemic. Then we've had years where we've had larger increases. Um, some of that in this 20, 
22 year due to reimbursements and FEMA and tornado and things like that. The general fund budget had a larger percentage increase. This year, again, as said on the first slide or second slide, was uh, you know primarily due to increase in salaries and wages and some cost of services. That lends itself well into this next slide. Budget trends, salary increases over time. We have had years where we've had a you know, cost of living, modest increase back in 2020. We didn't add people. We didn't have much of an increase in 2021 coming out of the pandemic. We rebounded in 2022. This year we had a small cost of living increase across the board for folks. But this next year, um, as we've considered throughout the year, um, in order to remain competitive, we have on average a 10.5% increase for staff members. New employees. How many full-time employees have we added over time? In 2020, there were six new employees. In 2021, coming out of the pandemic, we added no new employees. As we rebounded in 2022, you see six employees were added. This current year we're in, we added seven budgeted full-time employees. And the proposed budget shows five new employees being added to the budget. Here's a millage rate history over time. This slide should look very familiar to many of you. Um, the rollback rate is shown in blue, and the adopted rate, the rate that this body adopts each year, is shown in orange, with very few exceptions shown in 2012, 16, and 18, um, the only three years in which this body did not adopt the rollback rate. This is an important slide because as we look to 2024, what you see here is the rate staying the same. We've talked big picture about the general fund, some of the challenges. We've talked about some of the major um, impacts to the budget. Let's talk in particular about revenue. And as you'd expect, after a few of these slides, we'll talk in particular about expenses. Revenue, um, trends, projections, some of our revenue categories, those large revenue categories you're all familiar with, and some of the changes we foresee in 2024. So over time, we've had large revenue. I've alluded to it earlier. Um, responding from the tornado, um, there's large revenue. We had FEMA reimbursement and GEMA reimbursement that added a large revenue item in the 2022 budget. We're in the budget year here. Our estimated revenue is 36 million, 36.7 million. Those revenue categories, unchanged from years past, local option sales tax remains our largest revenue item, followed by property tax, insurance premium tax, occupational tax, or what some may colloquially call business licenses. Um, water and light is the transfer we get from Nooney Utilities. Um, franchise fees, title ad valorem tax, alcohol tax, fines, and permits. You see most increases um, shown year over year from 23 to 24 in these revenue categories. Some of the revenue changes between 2023 and 2024. You see in 2024, there, we're forecasting a million dollar revenue change in local option sales tax. You see here in, on real numbers on the previous slide, those top revenue categories, but the revenue changes here, a million dollar change increase in local option sales tax. We're showing an $800,000 increase in property tax and so on and so on. You can, I'm not going to read that for you, but you can all read what our forecasts are for the increase in revenue for those major revenue items for the 2024 budget. That was a quick three slides about revenues. Now we're going to look at expenditures. So there's certain topics. We want to talk about some trends and projections, some of those major expense categories. Um, look at expenses by function. How do we spend the money? Um, how do we plan on spending that money? And then what are those major operating expenses, expenditures, excuse me. So the trends and projections you see over time increased um, as we've grown as a, as a city, as an organization the services we provide through the people that provide them. Major expense categories, as alluded to earlier in the presentation, primarily wages and the benefits that accompany those wages, operating expenses here in the third group, and then our capital expenses. 
You're looking at a trend line here from 2022 on the left to 2024 on the right in those same items I showed before, wages, benefits, operating, and capital. They're pulled out here. Fairly flat, modest, but growth over time. By function, general government, generally understood as those people in City Hall. Um, public safety, 50% of our budget um, affords the opportunity to have law enforcement and fire safety folks here in our community. That's $18.3 million of the expenses. Public works, community development, and other services. Other services are Main Street, Carnegie Library, leisure services. Our major operating expen expenses, as you can see, moving from left to right, contractual services is the largest, continues to be the largest, has been the largest year over year for the past decade. Um, repairs and maintenance, vehicles. Um, we have a pretty good handle on the fleet now, um, so there's not a, a, a tremendous amount of new vehicles in this year's budget, but what we feel is appropriate for law enforcement, public works, fire, to make sure that we can meet the needs of the citizens. There's a little bit of a drop in that. But the rest of them are kind of on par with what you would expect. Um, modest gains in some electricity, but, you know, others that aren't. Gasoline, for instance, is kind of leveled off. We have a lot of vehicles that use a lot of gasoline. Uh, there are years when we forecast that being higher. This is not that we don't envision that being the case in 2024. Transfer to, sanit transfer to sanitation, that's the general fund transfer to support the sanitation fund. We see that as the same year over year in this year's budget. Benefit changes, I've talked to it earlier, um, you know, that a lion's share of our monies go to wages, salaries, and the benefits that accompany those. Here, as we've seen over time, insurance growing. These are years, the colored bars left to right. FICA retirement, uh, retirement has increased, although we envision, you know, that we're going to be able to stabilize that over time, hopefully with some of the action you take today looking at a different type of retirement plan program for new staff beginning in January. Workman's comp has stayed pretty flat over time. So I talked a little bit earlier about the number of employees we have, the number of employees we we're asking to add in this 2024 budget. What you see at the top line is current in the budget being proposed 305 full-time employees with six, six part-time employees and seven elected officials. With the five new employees, that total $423,027, that's all baked in salaries, wage benefits, are the assistant city manager for finance and HR, um, which was approved already by this body in 2023, a probation officer, which was approved, fire inspector, um, the Wadsworth auditorium event manager, and a, we're moving our open records clerk and the police department from part-time to full-time. So that accounts for the five positions that were talked about and discussed earlier. Another thing we're proud to um, tell the public um, and we're able to help our staff members is your minimum starting pay, the city of Noonan, hourly is $17.46 per hour. It's taken a little while. When I first got here, it was not near that. And so if you come and you want to find a, a gainful employment, we're, we're the place for you. Um, and then the increases that were discussed earlier, year over year in salaries, wages, which also affect benefits, um, are part of this bottom sentence. I'm not going to read it to you, but what it includes is a cost of living increase for all employees. Um, thereafter, 2% additional op um, based on longevity. There's a formula behind that. Um, and then there's a small market um, or merit adjustment that was delegated and given to each department director, and they, she or he could then make recommendations based on the performance of the folks that worked in, in their respective departments. Um, the average pay increase we talked about earlier across the board is 10.5%, being that 50% of our operating expenditures are allocated to public safety, you could imagine most of those increases are due to larger increases that we've talked about through this year and are very supportive for our public safety personnel. So a forecast, what do, what do we forecast 2024, 2025, and 2026? It's always, I think, smart to look ahead. Um, you see small, modest gains over time, but um, Nothing outrageous, nothing extraordinary or outstanding. This, again, is the general fund. 
So there's a lot on this slide. Um, I can share this presentation with you if you'd like to look at it. Um, we can put it online too if people, members of the public would like to look at it. But what are some of the forecasted three-year budget highlights? Um, you see the percentage increase, which I just showed here um, in real numbers. Um, the second point is of interest. We're forecasting uh, an increase in ad valorem growth, more so than sales tax. Um, ad valorem, a $1.6 million change from 24 to 26 compared to only an $800,000 change in sales tax. Um, this last sentence, I'm going to read these last two sentences. And um, the rollback millage rate is going to continue to be difficult to take each year. Um, that the council may want to consider a homestead exemption for potential tax relief for homeowners. And if there's a great interest there, we can talk more about that at a later meeting. However, um, it's important to note that second to last sentence, that that millage rate is continuing to take the rollback as a challenge each year. Um, this next line, forecasting marginal revenue gains in categories such as title ad valorem tax and some of those other main revenues we talked about. For expenses, we see a 4.5% change and a 4% in 25 and 26, respectively. Um, not a great substantial wage change. We believe that some of the moves we've made over the past few years have gotten us into a place that we're very competitive um, and feel confident about where we're at now from a salary and wages standpoint as well as benefits. Um, as with all organizations, we're going to continue to, to push against the headwinds of increasing costs for health care. Medical pharmaceutical costs continue to rise. Um, but, you know, our our team is constantly looking at the plans we have, and there may be a time in the future whereby we come to this group and look at modifying the plan we have, particularly on the medical and pharmaceutical side. We have very rich plans. Um, we want to make sure that our staff are treated well, but I think there's an opportunity in the future to look at, in particular, the gold platform. We do see a 7% uh, um, increase in retirement contributions. However, like I talked about earlier, this body's going to hopefully consider and take some action later today um, at our regular meeting that may help cure and fix some of this in the long term um, as we move towards a 401 defined contribution plan. Um, we think that there's some opportunity to um, curb costs and manage that at a rate that's just a little bit better for our organization in the future. Um, we see consistent funding of capital projects in the general fund, um, frankly, due to the passage of SPLOS 2025. The voters came out in that referendum supported that. That's going to help support our capital needs over the next six-year time horizon. Revenues begin in January of 2025 for that. Um, and we believe right now the staffing levels are adequate, like I said, in the general government community development likely going to continue to need to and pay attention to public safety and public works, so there may be small, modest additions to staff members in those departments. All funds in. So everything you've heard me up until now talk about is the general fund, our main operating account. Most of our work comes out of the general fund. We have other funds. We've talked to them before, the SPLOS fund, impact fee fund, hotel motel tax fund, et cetera, some of these special revenue funds. Um, all funds combined, you see this trend over time, a large increase. You may be saying to yourself, you know, Hasco, what, what's the difference between 22, 23? Well, we got in the trash business. Um, so that enterprise fund, when we consider all funds in together, is what accounts for that large increase. And so if you look at them in groupings, the first three from um, 2021, 20, 22, this is before we got into the billing and managing customer service side of our sanitation business, we're pretty flat and consistent. Well, the same is here. This increase between 22, 23 is solely due to that, getting in the trash business, kind of for lack of a better phrase. 2019 SPLOS, you see a little up and down over the five-year history, spending and collections. Uh, we're in the sixth year of SPLOS 19, um, and our budget, the outstanding funds, are primarily being used right now for street, roadway, paving, and maintenance. Impact fee fund, you know, you collect impact fees when deals happen, when construction projects happen, when developers come. You can forecast some of that, but it's hard at times. You know, that we collect them as the projects come in. Um, main purchase in the impact fee fund for this year is a fire truck, about $376,000 worth of impact fee funds. Sanitation fund I talked to when we 
in that first slide when we started talking about all funds. Again, look at the first three as a grouping, you know, pretty consistent. And then these next two years is when we got in the business. Um, so seeing small increase, 5.6% um, increase. Hotel motel tax fund, I'll let you guess what happened in this one year right here. The pandemic kept a lot of people out of hotels. A lot of hotels were closed. The fund decreased this year, but has risen steadily and has actually surpassed where we were prior to the pandemic. Those funds, those hotel motel tax funds are shared equally between three organizations. 37.5% come to the city. We use the general fund for operations. Another 37.5% go to Explorer Noonan Coweta. Um, and then the last 25% goes to the Noonan Center for their use. Total capital budget over time, which is all funds, like I said. So this could be some of the capital um, that we spend out of general fund. It's also could be some splossed funds. It could be other, but total capital budget includes um, four different funds and nine projects funded through those combined four funds. And then lastly, around capital projects, some of those significant projects. Um, the construction of fire training facility, which is ever so close to cutting a ribbon. I hope you get a chance to drive by. Um, and we hope to, before the year's out, um, cut a ribbon there. It may be early 2024, but real close on that one. Um, you know, still working on the roundabout at Noonan Crossing Boulevard and Stillwood. Um, intersection improvements at Jefferson Clark, Bullsboro, Jackson. I hope you know what I'm talking about, that S-curve as you come into downtown. Um, looking at sidewalks along Sprayberry Road. We've completed the parking lot improvements at the Wadsworth Auditorium. Other intersection improvements um, you can see listed in there. I won't read through them all. Um, paving of various streets through Elmig and Sploss, which this group touches every year as we let those um, projects and accept those funds. There's replacement of various culverts ongoing right now um, and more to come in the future. And then design of phase one of Lower Fayetteville Road. It's complete, moving into this next phase and then a roundabout at Grayson, Sprayberry, and Old Jefferson. So there's some significant capital projects that we wanted to draw to your attention that are using these funds over the past few years um, from those four funds. I'm going to step back, take a deep breath, and answer any questions you may have or try to. Anyone? This is also the opportunity for anyone in attendance from the public to come forward and ask any questions that they might have regarding the 2024 fiscal year budget. I do have one question. Sure. Um, we just had a wonderful presentation about the um, Farmer Street Cemetery and all of that. And I'm wondering, have we allotted for any place for that project to take place in our 2024 budget? And if so, where is it? No, ma'am. It's not currently contemplated. Yeah, once we have costs back, mm -hmm. um, we anticipate, you know, coming to this body and securing those funds, but there's no, without an idea of what the cost may be, we have not placed a number in here. I would like to draw attention to the body, though, that in the 2025 SPLOS referendum that was approved by voters this past November, there was one point, I'm looking at our public works director, Mr. Ray Norton, there's, there's a million plus in there for cemeteries. Um, so there's some money in that fund coming again. We'll start collections in January, but we anticipate coming to this body at a time in the future to fund whatever that final improvement program is right now without knowing what it is. It's not shown here. There's not even, there's not a placeholder even, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. And I'm familiar with that because I was looking at the mausoleum drawing that yeah. you guys had put together for Oak Hill. Um, but I was also going to bring up Eastview, um, mm -hmm there are some improvements that are needed over there. Yeah. And I hope that this budget reflects, even though it says $2,200, it's going to cost a little more than that to fix some of the things over there. Yeah. Um, part of that was uh, we had some, the renderings you're talking about that showed a mausoleum. We also showed improvements to both Eastview and Eastview Annex. Both of those have some good healthy landscaping done and then a treatment um, including some kind of high style fence out front. Um, and so both of those, like I said, Eastview and Eastview Annex were both contemplated during that SPLOS 2025, in addition to what you called out of the Samazaleum. Great. Yes, ma'am. You. You're welcome. Any other questions from the public or the council? Good job. Yes, Thank very you. good job. Anyone seeing no other hands go up? I'm going to...
call the end of the public hearing at this time. Appreciate that very much. Yes, sir. And that ends, uh, actually ends this agenda. There's no action item. So uh, we will reconvene in six minutes for our regular 6.30 meeting. Have Thank you. Christmas. <laughs> I didn't want to necessarily bring it up in the meeting. How you doing, sir?
Call the meeting to order. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day in the city in which we live. Guide us this evening as we make our decisions. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is the regular meeting of the Noonan City Council, December the 12th, 2023. Uh, we have the minutes from the um, regular meeting of November the 28th. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. Second. Motion second. We adopt the minutes uh, from November 28, 2023 as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those like to sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the next two items on appointments to boards and commission, the Cultural Arts Commission, if we put that on our next agenda, mm -hmm. and also the Development Authority, if you put that on our next agenda. That's and right. Mr. Alexander has a point of privilege this evening. Yes, sir. Uh, I noticed that we're reappointing our uh, Farmer Street Cemetery, and I talked with Ms. Jocelyn Palmer, and she agreed for another uh, term. So I put her name and nomination. Is there a second? Second. Motion to second. We uh, renominate Jocelyn Palmer to uh, the Farmer Street Cemetery Commission. Any discussion? I do. I have a question. Is what? this up for it was, this um, time or next It time? was actually on yeah. next month's agenda, and he wanted to bring it up off agenda to, to go ahead and make that appointment. Under our old business that it would be, or a new business? He's doing it under uh, boards and commissions. Board commissions because it's an appointment to a commission. So if he doesn't do it now, ahead of time, then it'll be on the new person to make that appointment at our next meeting. Uh, actually, it would be on our next agenda and the, and the meeting before. So the signing die. Before signing die. Yes, before okay. signing die. All right. So it would Got still it. be his appointment. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those like sign. Motion carried. Does Mr. Phillips have anything to say? Um, Mr. Phillips doesn't, but Mr. Craver does. Um, you know, it dawned on a couple of us today that this is going to be the last business meeting we have as staff with Councilman Alexander. And so on behalf of the staff, I just want to say thank you for your service. Um, thank you for your support over the years, and uh, we'll miss you. Thank you. Thank you. And I've enjoyed it uh, a lot of years. And uh, I've always said the employees are the heartbeat of our city, and we have outstanding leadership, uh, and I appreciate it. And I, I just I ask that the rest of the council continue to look out, support, and uh, just watch out for, the, for our employees because they, they make this. And I appreciate all the employees, what they've all done. So thank you. Agreed. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Graver. Yes, Thank you. I don't have anything this evening. Under new business, a public hearing that I'll open at this time or an application for alcohol beverage license, family dollar stores of Georgia. This is for package sales of malt beverages and wine or a location of 121 Jefferson Street. The reason for this is a new business. I, I, like I said a second ago, I've opened a public hearing on this. Does anyone like to come forward and speak to the issue? Seeing no one come forward and speak to the issue, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time. Is everything in order? All right, I'll ask for a motion. I, I would first like, though, to ask if there is a representative today from... Okay, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Is, uh, is there a motion on the issue? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. We approve the application for alcohol license at 121 Jefferson Street. Any discussion? Hey, I've got a quick question. I've never at Family Dollar to have alcohol. Is that is this something new, or is this just in this yes. area, or do they do alcohol everywhere? It's, I think it's corporate policy. I read they nope. they're <laughs> moving, they're changing their business plan. I read the same oh, article yeah. exactly. Exactly. to include oh. thousand stores package sales. Yeah. Okay, right. stores. something different. Yep, good question. Okay, I do have a motion to second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those like sign. Motion carried. Uh, the next is also a public hearing application for alcohol beverage license for family dollar stores, different location, 159 Temple Avenue. The reason is a new business, and this is for package sales of malt beverages and wine. It's the same as the other public hearing. I would ask if anyone here would come forward to speak to the issue. Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time and ask if there is a representative here. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. And is there a motion on the issue? 
So moved. Second. Motion to second. We approve the application as presented. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next is a public hearing uh, also on an application for alcohol beverage license. This is for Taco uh, uh, on, let's see, where is the address? 359. Uh, Millard Farmer Industrial Suite D. The reason for this is also a new business. There's a difference here. This is on-premise pouring of distilled spirits, malt beverages, and wine. Uh, is there anyone here that would like to speak to this issue? No? I, no one? All right. I'll close the public hearing at this time and ask if everything's in order. All right. Is there a representative here? Thank you. Are you open already? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Opening day? Uh, next, not, uh, next month, but we're not sure what day. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, congratulations. We appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. The next is consideration of a resolution for 2024 City Council meeting schedule. Its resolution is before you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. We adopt the resolution as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next is a resolution to appoint Ashley Nishay uh, as uh, an assistant prosecuting attorney of the municipal court. We had a resignation from this position and Ms. Nishay, Nishay has been uh, appointed here or is the suggested appointment for us. It's a resolution before you. If you have any questions, Ms. Blankenship is here. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor and Council. Anyone? Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Thank you very much. The next is uh, consideration of the ordinance to amend the 2022 uh, fiscal year budget. Mr. Craver is here tonight, obviously. And can answer any questions you have That's on right. this ordinance. Again, Does anyone have any questions? It's no. commonplace for this group. We do this yep. annually. So, sure. But I am prepared to answer questions if you may have. Anyone? Okay. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. second. Motion and second to adopt the ordinance as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carried. Uh, Mr. Norton, you're here with a, a request to approve the plan designs, adoption agreement for the newly created 401A and 457 retirement plans. It is. How are you this evening? I'm doing good, Mr. Mayor. How are you in council? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, what you have before you is the actual plan design for the 401 and 457 that we <coughs> brought, uh, we got approval from this body uh, to proceed with. Uh, I don't have that date. Uh, but we did tell council we would be back uh, for y'all to review and approve the plan design. And the pension committee does have, uh, I want to read our recommendation, as defined in the 401A profit sharing plan, effective 1-1-24, all newly hired and rehired employees of the city of Newnan will be enrolled in the 401A plan. The pension committee's recommendations, the following biweekly contributions to the individual accounts. Employees not classified as elected officials receive a base contribution of 10% of their gross income with additional, additional matching contribution of up to a maximum of 3% based on the employee's voluntary contribution to their own 457 deferred compensation plan. And then for the other class employees, employees classified as elected officials receive a defined contribution amount not to exceed their biweekly gross income. There is no matching contribution based on the employee's voluntary contribution to their own 457 compensation plan. Any questions? We've got uh, Mr. Jim Fallon with AMRET here. That's our consultant. Uh, Ms. Nanette, she's with the pension committee as well. So we we, we got enough people here to fill any question, hopefully, that y'all got. I just want to make sure at the beginning you said the 451A profit sharing plan, but it's really 450, 401A. For, yes, a 401A. 
And then there's a 457. Yeah, but the 401, it's not a profit sharing. It's actually a deferred company. Defined contribution. Defined contribution. Defined contribution. Thank you. Any other questions? Clarifications? Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion of second to approve. And want to make sure that the minutes and the motion include items one and two in the handout. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. They do. All right. Thank you. Motion or second. Any other uh, discussion? Question? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Under unfinished business, one, uh, this is 31 Jones Street, the owner update and request for extension. Mr. Murray, how are you this evening? Doing well, Mayor Brady and Council. Uh, just as a quick update, uh, a recap, this property uh, was last before you in August uh, where they were granted a 120-day uh, 120 day extension uh, on the resolution. Uh, it is a storm damage property. The original owner's, our owner is deceased and it's uh, been passed down to the family. Unfortunately, there has not much to report on the actual property itself, but there has been some preliminary work done. Uh, they have decided that they are going to tear down the structure. Uh, they've um, had quotes from different contractors and have selected a contractor and they've pulled a demo permit. They are asking for uh, the, the issue right now is, is they're trying to raise enough money to be able to complete the demolition. And in speaking with one of the family members about a week ago, they've got about half the money raised. Uh, these demolitions are, are not cheap, as like as anything these days, and um, they're trying to raise some money, and they're asking for 60 days to see if they can give enough time to get the money raised. Any questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. We grant the request of 60-day extension in order for them to raise money for demolition. It's my understanding that you said they have already pulled the demolition. Yes, program. sir, they have. That's been paid for and, and, and is, is, is on record. Okay. I have a motion to second. Any other questions? And just real quick, Mr. Murray, when you're speaking with them, does 60 days sound like a reasonable time? Do, do they sound confident they could accomplish this in 60 days? That I, um, <laughs> they sound confident, but I, I have a little bit of a doubt. But um, um, I'm hopeful. Uh, I think they're. I do think they're legitimately trying. It's a but it's a big expense, and and they're trying the best they can. I, I feel to get the, the funds necessary. So. Would maybe 90 days be better just to give them a little bit more time if y'all would be amicable to something like that? No. Well, I, I think, six, I think the 60 going. days put, gives them, it was their suggestion. Right, it's been yes. going on long enough. And then, okay. and then if, if, if needed, we're here. Right. Um, as always. So, okay. 60 day extension motion second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those like sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Murray. We appreciate it. The next item on the agenda, in fact, the last item on our agenda, except for an executive session that we need to go into, is the second and final reading for the rezoning request RZ 2023-04 for 12.56 acres off Bullsboro Drive, a portion of tax parcel, parcel N5723. Any discussion on this? If none, I'll entertain Make a motion. motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. We approve as presented on a second reading. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion no. carried. I'm sorry. It, it is a 6-1. Six 6-1 one. Six one vote. Who was uh, opposed? Pardon me? Who was opposed? 6-1 last time. Just 6-1 last time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the next item. Mayor Pro Tem Correcto, please enter, in, enter us into an executive session for legal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we now enter into closed session as allowed by OCGA Section 50 TAC 14 TAC 4 and pursuant to advice by the city attorney for the purpose of discussing legal and that we in open session adopt a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor or presiding officer to execute a daft David in compliance with OCGA Section 50 TAC 14 TAC 4 and that this body ratify the actions of the council taken in closed session and confirm them that the subject matters of the closed session were within exceptions permitted by the open meetings law. You've gotten pretty good at that. <laughs> Too many times. Just in time. And Too many many times. Is there a second? Second. Motion to second. We go into executive session for legal. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. Merry Christmas to everyone. We are in executive session. Here you go. Rose. All right. I don't sign the words. What's that? I don't sign that. Right. I just want to make sure you concur.